My name's Charlie Clough, and um, snapshots are, there's too many to talk about. I've known Jim since I was 12. We were best friends in, in grade school and high school. He was my best man. We were college roommates together. We got in a lot of trouble together. Because <laughs> Jim never did anything halfway. <laughs> but the thing that has come back to me time and time again, um, and Kelly, I want to get to know you and the girls even better. I know he has always had good taste in people, so you're great people. The thing that comes back to me is a letter that Jim wrote me the year after we got out of high school. I had left to go around the U.S. and around the world with uh, um, interdenominational music ministry where I met my wife. And in the process of coming to know God even better through that ministry, I was unearthing a lot of junk from my life. And I was struggling with a lot of my past and identity issues and confession of things that I'd really done wrong. And I just poured out my heart in a letter to Jim, figuring that he'd never speak to me again. Um, and the first thing that he said in the letter back was, I don't care where you go, I don't care what you do, I don't care what you've done, you'll always be my friend. Um, and that's the heart of the man that I came to know and love. And talking with some of my high school friends, you know, none of us have been able to find Jim for a long time. I hadn't talked to him in over a decade. Um, and I just stumbled across him on the internet about three months ago. And we emailed two or three times. Um, last time we connected was on his 40th birthday. And those are treasured conversations on the internet to me now. We were both too busy to get in touch. I live two and a half hours away. Um, but I'm so grateful now that I found his testimony to see where he'd been all those years and to see how our amazing God saw the end from the beginning and brought him out of that and brought him home. <laughs> God doesn't do anything halfway either. And I know he can do the same thing for each one of us. God is so good. Um, I'm Tate Deems. The snapshot that comes to my mind is uh, two summers ago, we did uh, an extreme evangelism event with Jim, which is uh, a weekend spent uh, sharing the gospel with people. And, uh, it was Saturday morning. We were preparing uh, in the morning to before we went out to talk to people. And uh, it was in Riverside Park. We found a bench, and Greg uh, brought his guitar, and I brought my guitar, and we played some uh, worship uh, music, and then we prayed for a half hour of just just prayer and I remember uh, somewhere in the prayer I, I, I opened my eyes and looked at Jim and he was just like this praying and he had the Bible in his, in his other hand and the fervor which, with which he loved our God was, was incredible uh, and it was very inspiring so that's a snapshot of Jim is, is him praying to the Lord with everything he was just to kind of piggyback off of that, I have that similar picture of Jim. I had the opportunity to um, get to know him in the last six months of his life also. I, I lead worship here sometimes at this fellowship, and I remember him sitting right about in the first couple rows there, and he just loved to be in front, and, and I just have these memories of both hands up in the air, his eyes completely closed. You guys, he worshiped God with, without holding anything back. I mean, I, I remember him running to people just to make sure they got this message of the gospel. I mean, this was not something that another phase of his life, this was something that it was everything to him. And uh, I was very, very fortunate to, to get to know him as, uh, as we're talking about here in the last six months of his life. But my snapshot is both hands in the air. That's, that's my snapshot of Jim. I'm Ed Arizona, and I became an activist about four years ago. I joined the Great News Network, which Jim was involved in. I didn't know him well then, but I went to a couple of the boot camps, they call it, where all Christians get together, different things, and we get together and we share the gospel. So I started hearing about Jim, become Jim or Nick, you know. I started hearing about these guys. Finally, um, I went to the Las Vegas one. They had one in Las Vegas. And I got to see him. I like, go, okay, there he is. And we were preaching at a college, a Las Vegas college. And he got there on the stool and he preached it and preached it. And my friend Linda, Mary Jonas, said it right. You know, he can watch that man preach all day and teach and learn so much from him. All the hecklers that he took care of and 
I'm so amazed at wow, this guy is a man of God. You, know, you really have a passion to share with your life. Um, after that, I went home and I joined the left guy with Donna, another, another faithful evangelist. They made a fishing pool left guy. I joined it. And Jim was the moder moderator, you know, of the made it. And um, I started to find out he was so obedient and consistent. I'd email him and in minutes he would come back to me. Got me on the web guy, got me a t-shirt, have all the guys from about uh, evangelism to resources, and he always got back to me by like an hour. Wow. You know, he's either he's witnessing or he's helping others witness. And I was like, this guy. Wow, you know. And you know, for a whole year we just did that, email each other, you know, he always encouraged me. Until, you know, well, last week, you know, I emailed him for another thing and came home, we were waiting for his response, and I'm like, no, oh, they're maybe he's busy, busy, you know, he's real quick. The next day I woke up, went to work, waiting for him to respond, and he still didn't respond, so I knew something was wrong. So um, my friend Chad called me, and he said, hey, you know, you know what happened? I said, no, what happened? No, you have died. I'm like, what do you mean? And I, I didn't know who to talk about, you know. And I'm on the web guy, actually. I was looking for Jim that day. And he said, Jim Jones, you know him? I'm like, yeah, I'm on the web guy right now. You know, he's gone. And I couldn't believe it. So, and that, Donna made a post on there. And I, I didn't even look at the post. I was looking for Jim's old post for him to respond to me. And, and that's my snapshot of him first in Las Vegas, preaching. That's his passion. That's, that's what he lived for. That's what he died for. To live with for Christ and to gain and to die. And and him not responding with an act of obedience. And someone you know that's so consistent. <laughs> Only until death, you know. He always was there. Always there. And that, that was the reflection of his fruit. Of loving the Lord, serving the Lord. I mean, that's, that's what he did. And you can tell by someone who does that. If someone they can answer you or, you know, Man, you know, he had a passion. Second Corinthians chapter three it says the law kills. Doesn't mean that the law of God is no good. Paul later says in Romans, the law is great because it shows us that in our own flesh there's nothing we can do to earn God's forgiveness, acceptance, or approval. There's nothing we can do on our own to guarantee that we will spend eternity with God in heaven. But then Second Corinthians also goes on to say, but it's the Spirit that gives life. And Jim didn't understand that yet. But soon after he came here, he did attend uh, the vineyard where he met Jesus Christ. And he discovered that Jesus Christ paid for all of his failures to live up to the law. That Jesus Christ died on the cross so that he would be forever forgiven, accepted, approved of, and loved by God, even with some of the hang-ups he still had. He was so excited about putting his confidence in Christ as his Savior. And he was so excited about the good news of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't about organized religion. It was about knowing Jesus, that he wanted his family to know Jesus. And then he began to read the Word of God. And... Uh, from that point on, his sole purpose in life was to help people, first of all, understand the place of the law and the holiness of God. And that whether or not you've seen or understood the Ten Commandments, you know what your own conscience is. And every one of us has violated our own law, our own conscience. And we have felt shame and guilt. And there is only one person who could ever remove that from us, and that's Jesus Christ who was prophesied to come to the cross, he came to the cross, he died on the cross to pay for my failure. James, and yours, whether you realize that. That you might know once and for all that you are loved and accepted by him if you would put your confidence in him as your savior that he did the job for you and you would allow him to be the master of your life. I hear the I hear the voice 
I hear the voice. 